Are you ready to be blown away with some new information about Tesla? Today I'm revealing a new measurement technique and some things you've never seen before. So welcome to Trade Your Way to Freedom. It's going to be a fantastic show today. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, let me know what you're trading. But I'm going to show you a new measurement technique on Tesla that you're going to go, wow. Hopefully you'll go, so you have to watch the video all the way to the end to be able to appreciate what I'm going to be showing it to you. A technical analysis technique you have never seen before, I guarantee it. So remember, watch the video all the way to the end. That's where the good stuff is. Let's jump into today's video right now. See ya. Well, I hope you came prepared because you are going to see a technique that has never been done before and you're going to get to see it live today. I think you're going to be impressed and hopefully it will cause one of those eye-opening and aha moments as we like to say, hey, let's jump over into and get things started right away. One of the things we're going to be taking a look at, if you're joining us over on the YouTube channel, thanks a lot. Glad to see you're over there. And the question for the week is, did you know that we're going to reveal things about this chart that's going to show it where it's going to go, and you're going to be going, wow, this is impressive. But before we get to that, we want to go ahead and start looking at the stocks that we are going to be taking a look, and taking a look at to trade this week, and also take a look at how we did and how we're doing. Anil is not with us today, so we're going to start with his stock. He's uh, transit, uh, transiting back from Dallas, and um, I really liked the stock that he has picked out for us. As we said last week, we're going to be basically jumping on the stocks we're going to be trading directly going forward so we can get right to the charts, save you time, and also effort. So Remember, we're going to be. I'm going to be making a present special presentation about a tech, a, a technical analysis technique towards the end. You don't want to miss that. So, a Neil stock for this week is GNRC, and that is Generac Holdings. Uh, Generac is also a big uh, company with generators and that type of stuff. And it looks pretty darn good. Uh, taking a look over here at the weekly chart, it is going into a significant move. Uh, it has been coming down, just finished a double bottom kind of uh, uh, pattern and is looking to break out of that and continue going. Uh, Neil liked this stock. He basically said it came onto his list a mid part of June and he's looking for a trade to get into it. He said he would go ahead and enter it here with a stop loss at 5%. Of course, me being the pullback trader, I will say uh, I like it. At the same time, I like it on a pullback into the into the uh, moving averages, like the 20-day moving average. It's respecting that nicely and are the uptrend line uh, and are the uptrend line. Wanna take a look at, right here is where we did our breakout. Let's see, approximately about right there to right there. There we go. So it's sitting at the breakout line, may drop a little bit below that before it pops back up. And uh, so over on the YouTube channel, if you do have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask them. And I will basically do my best to respond and answer a uh, chart I highlighted a little bit uh, earlier. I'll be uh, talking about that very quickly. So uh, GNRC, good looking stock. Let's take a look at how are the indexes doing. But on the indexes, here's where we're sitting as of about nine o'clock this morning. As you see, we pushed above my 40% line. Very pleased with that. And uh, here's where we were last week. Here's where we are on the indexes for this week. As you can see, the Russell is still uh, lagging everything, but I'm very pleased autopilot trading up. We've gained almost 5% this, this week. And so it was absolutely crazy and uh, absolutely phenomenal to uh, uh, be trading this this week. So let's go ahead and take a look at what are the... So let's start with the S&P. One of the things I'm projecting up to the upside on the S&P, we have, have gotten up into a resistant or a, a supply zone 
where we would anticipate a reversal, at least a pullback. Right now, the markets are acting extremely strong. The inflation has was lower than anticipated and expected. It'll be really interesting when the Fed meets at the end of the month. Are they going to raise rates or not raise rates? If they don't raise rates, look for this rally to continue and push on up. So we'll watch the spiders. I'm anticipating we need some kind of a pullback. Take, and this is almost on every chart we have, you can do a double. Here's a uptrend line here. There's a secondary trend going on across here, though. Look for a pullback into that level. And as you'll notice, it's right in between the 8 and the 20-day moving average. And so that would be a potential area where you could pick up some uh, trade on the spiders and or look to trade the leverage ETF for the spiders. Of course, the one stock, the two ETFs that I really like trading, the Q's and also the Russell. Look what's happened with the Q's. We have broken out of this uh, supply area. And as we stipulated, um, it took us one, two, three, four weeks to chew up all the supply from the sellers that were over here. We have now broken out. So that level right there at about the 371 level then becomes our level of uh, support. Watch for pullbacks into that area. The candlestick that we have right now, the day's not over yet, but it could turn out to be a, I will call it a miniature miniature shooting star simply because the, the size of the candlestick, it's almost just a spinning top size candlestick. And so, uh, so that's what I've got going on with the cues. Uh, over on the weekly chart, again, look for a pullback into the midsection of that uh, of that area there. And for a bonus, I'm going to throw in, what about TQQQ? Well, TQQ is doing a similar type situation, but again, look for a pullback into the midsection of TQQ about the 4237 level. And uh, and that may be uh, where you could take a trade there and anticipate a move on up to the 56 and even up to the $86 level prior to the end of the year. So excellent. The Russell is also, okay, Russell has gotten up into its supply zone. And this is the first time it's been up into this region where the sellers came in on a weekly basis over here. And what's happened? Well, we hit and we pushed down. Of note that I wanna uh, share with you is take a look at where price actions actually got to. Put on, here's a Fibonacci. That is a Fibonacci extension that goes from this low to that high, back to this low. And that gives us an idea to the upside of where prices may go. And so sure enough, prices went up the 78% retracement extension to 100%. And then the 1272, 1278 extension, those are the levels where you anticipate prices getting to. If the pattern is a weaker pattern, it will tend to want to roll over at the 78%. And that's exactly what's happened with the Russell, which confirms what we already know. The Russell has been weaker than any of the other indexes through, throughout the year so far. That's what we've got going with the Russell. What I'm looking for the Russell, though, is I'm anticipating a pullback. And the flip side of that, and the the the... the other way we can measure this is let's just take this high here to this low, and we can figure these extensions out in you know backwards, and that'll give us an idea. If we pull back to a hundred percent pullback, would be back to one eighty five, and then but we could somewhere between one eighty one and one eighty five would be a, a logical place for IWM to turn around. Roll that over and look at the TNA. The TNA and the TQQ are a little bit bonuses today. And we can do the same thing here. Let's just take it from this high, this low, back to that high. And it has a 100% pullback on that would take us down to the breakout area, about 34.25. If you're not familiar with do utilizing the Fibonacci's, uh, you can find... Fibonacci training over on my YouTube channel. Uh, and um, 
I've got three tutorials, correction, two tutorials over there for you to take a look at. That's what we have going on with the Russell and the indexes. So now we're going to be going into the stock that I'm going to be trading. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at some trading secrets that I want you to be aware of. You know, I got to thinking over the weekend and that we can focus on the habits we want to change as far as becoming a better trader, which is all well and good. However, uh, so we can say these are bad habits. I want to get rid of the bad habits. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, what we need to also be looking at is, well, what are the good habits that we want to start? My wife used to work in a bank, uh, a savings and loan, back when they still had those. Do they still have savings and loans? Anybody know? Uh, but anyway, she was working a savings and loan, and they would give them the, the people in their training about how to spot counterfeit bills. Now, you probably have heard this before. At the same time, though, it's still a truism. The way they trained the people to spot counterfeit bills was to teaching them how a real $20 bill feels, touches, and, and smells, I mean, the whole nine yards, you know, <laughs> going through that, uh, because they said, if you study the, the real bill, you'll be able to sense almost more immediately what the uh, what the fake bill is like. And so I got to think and I said, you know, we need to do that for the habits we want to start. We need to focus on this is the habit I'm going to start. I know it's a good habit for trading. And so here's a few of those. And I'm going to be honing in on these as we go forward uh, throughout the rest of the year. One, let winning habits win is, is kind of the title of this. So focus on what what you want. So first, develop a robust trading plan. Robust trading plan. Uh, if you, you know, if you don't have a robust trading plan, let me know. I can send you mine. I'll be glad to share uh, that information with you. And so, number two is implement an effective risk management uh, strategy and plan. One of the things I'm really pleased I'm going to be presenting at the Investor Business Daily uh, Meetup National uh, meeting on the 19th of August, uh, and I'm going to be one of the presenters. And I think I'm the, what I'm going to be presenting on is before you can win, you have to know how to lose. And that is so, so incredibly important because I see too many traders, they don't have, they, they spend all their time focusing on how do I get into a trade? They want that to be absolutely perfect, where in reality, they also need to be taken in consideration, well, how do I get out of a trade and what is an acceptable loss? And so again, have a implement a effective risk management. Two, be patient and wait for your setups. Don't over trade. Number four, master emotional capital. And you do that by practicing discipline, Patience. Hey, I got it. Okay. And then last but not least, commit to getting a little bit better every day, every week, and then journal those effects. And so of these, please respond back to me, of these habits, which one will you focus on going into this week or maybe through the rest of the year? Please just type it down in the comments. Which of these good winning trading habits will you do you want to focus on and you'll commit to so with that let's go ahead and take a look at let's take a look at my stock for now yeah let's go ahead and look at you know the next thing is just really quickly hey if you looking to discover your secrets to clarify your trading unlock and unlock the profit potential you may want to take a look at autopilot trading i know that here's some of the things that it addresses and uh, we make a really good offer. It's less than $95 a month. And you get a couple of these things every week uh, that basically our pre-flight checklist would tell you exactly what I'm trading, where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out, and, and all of that. And uh, that comes to you via email so that you can place your orders, uh, if you're going to parallel trade with us, 
over the weekend when the market is closed. Therefore, it takes away a lot of that, um, a lot of the uh, angst and emotional aspects of your trading. So my stock for today is Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks, I absolutely, Palo, Palo Alto Networks broke out over here. And it's just a little bit below that Fibonacci there. So I'd need to draw that in there. And I'll go ahead and just drop the it in there. Palo Alto Networks, excellent comp rating, 99. Uh, accumulation distribution, B plus. SMR, an A, and an up-down volume of 1.9. Where am I going? Where do I want to get into this particular trade? I'll look for it to get all the way down to somewhere between 226 down to it could down float all the way down to 213, 213. I will extend this uptrend line because pulling back into that uptrend line could also be another excellent opportunity to to enter. Matter of fact, I like where it uh, uh, intersects with the 61% uh, uh, retracement, that may be a, a great place for a trade to take place. So that's what I absolutely, so Palo Alto Networks, that's my pick for the week. That's my pick for the week. Okay, hey, as promised, let's go over and I wanna take a look at the uh, technical analysis technique. I promise you, let's take a look at it and it's on, one of our friends, <laughs> not our friends, but it's on Tesla. Guys, Tesla has earnings coming up on the 19th. So I would not necessarily look to put a trade on Tesla uh, uh, prior to the 19th, but there's some excellent things that are happening here with Tesla. Let's first identify the pattern. So Tesla's doing a couple of cool things, guys. And, and I'm primarily interested in over here in the weekly chart. I've got earnings coming up on the 19th. You can't see that on the 19th over here. But look what's going on here. I've got a shoulder. I've got a head. I've got another shoulder going on there. And so what is my measurement to the upside? Now, you may know how to uh, uh, measure these. There's a lot of different ways, but I've discovered a unique way to measure what's going on with the uh, utilizing the Fibonacci. So Fibonacci is the technical technique of uh, measuring on Fibonacci is basically you measure from the low here to the midsection of the neck line. That gives you your amount that you're expected to run then pull it back down to where you break out above the neckline and project that up. And that gives you your upside target. Hopefully, you, you know, and, and so what we can do is, which I thought was really cool, measure Fibonacci from the low here. Now this is Fibonacci extension. I'm gonna measure up to the neckline, click on it there and then measure back over here to where it breaks out of the neckline right there. And as you can see, this 100% moved up to 326. That becomes the upside target for somewhere between the 78% up to the 1272, and that becomes our target for the price move related to this head and shoulder pattern. Is that slick or what? If you want to confirm that, the old the old way of doing it was to just basically take your cursor, draw in a line across here. Let me see, draw in your line. And I can just take that duplicate or activate the trend line and drag this trend line over to where it's broken out and bingo, bango comes out to just about the same the same uh, uh, perspective up. That is the upside target. So why did I do the Fibonacci is going to the midsection of the, 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 the uh, neckline here, Tim? Is because that's the measurement technique we utilize for uh, uh, measuring head and shoulders and, and, and their projected upside target. 
So that is just a nice little, you know, normally you're absolutely right. We would have measured the price action from here to here, back to here, and that would give us one target. But this is a, 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 a technique that you can utilize to find out uh, based on uh, traditional technicals on from the low to the neckline, back to the breakout. I didn't know I could use my Fibonacci's that way, but it worked. It seemed to work out really, really excellent. And I wanted to share that with you so that you would be the first to know uh, that of this technique. And, and as you say, it rock solid because it comes out right on the right on the you know, right on the nose of that projected upline right there. So any comments or questions? Any questions over from the YouTube channel? Anybody? <clears throat> And also, if you are over there, I'd appreciate uh, 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 you know just let us know we're doing a good job with the thumbs up, and uh, and we'll proceed from there. So that basically covers us for this week. I just want to remind you that all the materials we do present are that are for trading purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method part of the risk of their own personal capital. Uh, looking forward to going through the rest. Uh, going through with the rest of the year, folks, we have exactly 118 trading days left in the year of 2023. And I am very pleased to be above my 40% line moving up and out of there. And so we'll continue to look for the rest of the year being full of explosive growth and consistent successful trading. And Neil, we missed you this week. We look forward to jumping on board with you uh, come next week. Okay. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Have a great weekend. Again, aloha. God bless everybody. See ya.